So this month, motor manufacturer Lotus and Centrica, the parent company of British Gas, announced an exciting new partnership to redesign electric vehicle ownership. Now, working together, they're going to develop a new model of integrated connected vehicles, homes and customers, alongside a sustainability programme that will drive the journey to net zero carbon. Now, joining me to discuss this new partnership are Uday Senapati, Executive Director, Corporate Strategy and Product Management at Lotus, and Carl Bayliss, Vice President of Mobility and Home Energy Management Ventures from Centrica. So, Uday, first of all, starting with you, just talk us through the strategies that the Lotus Centrica partnership are going to focus on. It's quite an exciting new journey with um, new exciting products new investments, uh, new roadmaps and so on. Product is now, nowadays, just a part of the journey. We needed uh, an ambitious partner, which we got in Centrica. There is a big stress on, obviously, um, carbon net zero future uh, within our operations, within our dealerships, within the car and the customer, and of course, our own employees. So that's something else we are also going to focus on. And Carl, from Centrica's perspective? Well, it's a really exciting opportunity. I think uh, what we're looking to achieve here is really a breakthrough moment for both uh, automotive and from the energy industry together. A new opportunity, a new dawn of, of electrification and customer models that will go with it. And also, as, as Uday mentioned, the, the challenge towards net zero as well is a, is a big thing for us as well. And why is the Lotus partnership perfect for Centrica? With Lotus's new, um, new product, uh, portfolio coming up, the Avaya being the uh, the superstar in that uh, that lineup there, gives us the opportunity not only to have adjacent markets but also pull them together and work in one single marketplace. And what's really exciting is that we've got a completely white sheet of paper to work from. And Ude, why did you choose Centrica as your partner for the transition to EVs? For the last sort of 18 months, we've been talking with oil and gas companies, energy companies, startups and, and, and whatnot, everyone wanting to work in this. With Carl's venture, it's really pushing the boundaries, the, the bar in innovation, uh, creativity and thinking beyond the normal providing infrastructure for people to charge their cars. but you know, giving something exciting, more seamless. Tell us about the all new electric hypercar, the Avaya, um, because it's going to begin production, I think, later this year. The journey that Lotus has to take now uh, and go on now is massive. Avaya is everything that showcases how much challenge we're willing to take, uh, how far we're willing to go. So that's for me, Avaya, which is effectively start of our journey as a symbol. Geely, um, you know, one of the most exciting uh, groups in the automotive industry, taking a majority shareholding within Lotus, has completely revamped um, our thinking. Ivaya is clearly the statement of intent for the future, but uh, that's not to say that we're ditching everything we stand for today. Everything that is Lotus DNA stays on. But of course, we will embrace electrification um, quite significantly and in a way that, uh, again, our fans, our followers would really like to see in the future. And what challenges do you face when you're actually manufacturing an all-electric hypercar and how does the partnership that you have now with Centrica help overcome these? It is hugely challenging uh, to come up with something like this and the challenges are not finished yet. Uh, there are still huge challenges in making sure this is relevant to the customers, to the world out there. I think the product side, the car, the Lotus DNA, that's we are extremely excited about putting absolutely the best out there. The rest of the journey is experiencing and living with a car like this. And I think that's where Centrica comes in. And Carl, tell us then about how Centrica is going to provide this infrastructure for the charging and beyond. I just sit and listen to Uday all the morning, <laughs> I think, and the exciting journey that Lotus are on. And I think that that really underlines, again, the ambitions that they have and the way that I think... Um, an organization of the scale of Centrica can help support meet those ambitions. We really want to branch that further, well beyond the car and into the ecosystem, the fabric of the home, and the fabric of the lifestyle of the customer. Now, whether we're talking about technology that we have already on the shelf with smart homes and smart monitoring, so charging and infrastructure is just one thing, but the way that the, the car interacts with the home and the home interacts with the customer and the customer interacts with all of them is going to be very, very exciting. That we can really start to turn the dial on decarbonization too and actually have a, a meaningful experience that runs all the way through the Lotus DNA into uh, electrification. 
Uh, Uday, are you aware that your customers' needs and lifestyles are changing? The auto industry is going through the biggest change uh, that we've seen in over 100 years um, with the push into electrification. Clearly, th this is not just changing the mode we uh, use to power a car, but also with the digital lifestyles we all live with. Added to that, it's how customers feel about uh, being environmentally friendly as well. And, and there's a far more sense of responsibility these days in people. And these guys will be asking for completely different things. Uh, so we've got to be prepared for this. In the here and now, presumably with people who've grown up with internal combustion engines now moving into EVs, their relationship with their car is also changing. People see electric cars as a challenge the range anxiety and charging infrastructure as hindrances. I would like to see this in slightly different lights where, you know, we've all started to live with mobile phones. When they were new, there were challenges, similar challenges. How do you charge? And when the charge runs out, what do you do? And now we don't have that anxiety at all. And um, it's the lifestyle. I think this whole seamless way of living with electric cars will come. I'd like to see this as, a, uh, as, a, as an opportunity, not a challenge to want people to enjoy the electric car feeling and we at Lotus certainly with Evaya we've proven that um, electric cars are not just a challenge but they can be a very very exciting uh, sports cars and cars that you can live with. And how do you expect to see this develop over the next 10 years? 10 years is a very exciting time frame because uh, what you see is by 2030 most countries are bringing in uh, climate change sort of protocols by effectively banning IC engine cars. That's where you've got to start to live with these new technologies, electrification in particular. So it's not about uh, fighting it, but wanting to make it relevant, wanting to make it exciting. I think that's the biggest uh, thing that I see happening in the next 10 years. What else do you see as the biggest challenges in the tr transition to EVs? I think the biggest challenge in my personal view is uh, mindset. If you'd asked me about 12, 18 months ago, whether EV is the future, I would have said it looks like it, but I wouldn't want it to be. So that has massively changed in my own mind in the last, uh, I'll definitely say last 12 months. And th that change coming into mass mindsets is, is, I think, the biggest hurdle. It's not just about uh, putting more charging infrastructure and better batteries and better technologies in, but it's also about how you deal with the overall package. And if we could achieve this through this uh, partnership, I think that's a massive win. And Carl, what are the specific areas that Centrica is actually working on uh, to enable this transition? Well, we've been doing uh, electrification in, in vehicles for some time now, since 2012, really, we started that journey. And I think what's really exciting is the way that, you know, our experience with high power charging comes together with, um, uh, with the Avaya, for example, but also our ability to, to serve semi-public charging infrastructure, home businesses and, and organisations. There's a suite of technologies that we've got in the pipeline, in the skunk works, ready to come into a, into a, a brand like Lotus and uh, stuff that we're working together on to meet their specific lifestyle demands as well. So there's an awful lot which we've seen already in electrification that have helped debunk the myths, but there's an awful lot that we can do behind the scenes with Lotus to, to really be a, a step shift in the, in the electrification. Now, all of this, and we referred to it earlier on, is um, part of the road to net zero. Carl, can you just explain what is the net zero goal? In a nutshell, net zero is our, our, um, our commitment by the middle of the century, by 2050, to, to neutralise our carbon emissions, which means that we no longer rely on fossil fuels. Um, and what we do have to rely on fossil fuels, we use carbon capture. In essence, we give ourselves a net zero base of, of a carbon footprint. So electrification of transport is really, really important. Decarbonisation of heat in the home is another really important mission, um, as well as in the construction industry, as well as the, the choices we make around industry. I think there's, um, uh, there's an awful lot to do between now and 2050. Certainly, as I look at other markets around the world, we can see that they've been more aggressive 
aggressive in their uh, in their approach to uh, to net zero by taking cars off of the road, uh, banning the sale of internal combustion engines, and I suppose in in attacking the rebound as we come out of this pandemic, somebody had to mention it at some point. Do we want to go back to the way we were, or do we want to continue on this on this clean air journey? So I think there's there's lots of things that are going on uh, in different pillars of electrification in industries and, and mobility, and uh, we're we're very lucky to be or, or very privileged to be in in the in the driving seat as we start to take those uh, those big steps. You did mention it, Carl. How is the COVID-19 crisis actually affecting the future of EVs? There's always going to be a short-term bump, as we've seen a supply chain um, affected in some cases. But we've also seen around the world as well that, you know, as I, as I mentioned, the, the clean air, people don't necessarily want to go back to their uh, internal combustion engine and start polluting again. And I think that the, the pandemic itself gives us the, uh, the opportunity to reflect and make sure that we attack the rebound uh, or attack the uh, building back better, as they say, um, uh, with, with, a, with a cleaner agenda. Um, tell us about the sustainability programme that you at Lotus are going to be developing with Centrica to help you guys reach net, net zero goals. When we started planning our strategy, put our product plans together and uh, embraced electrification in a big way, the, the other clear thought that came into mind was um, how does that have an impact on not just on environment by doing uh, environmentally friendly cars, but uh, how do we run our operations, our supply chain, uh, our own people, their movements, and so on. So the Evaya factory that goes live uh, later this year will be a carbon net zero factory. And that is the beginning of our journey. And we have committed that uh, the whole footprint of Lotus uh, will be exactly that in the future. And this is, again, one of the fruits of the partnership. And Carl, how is Centrica uniquely positioned to develop sustainable energy solutions? Centrica is uniquely placed with not just the ability for us to have our energy solutions and supply, but we've also got expertise in decarbonising and, and optimising factories across the globe. But above that, we've also got the, uh, the foresight, if you like, around what happens next. So we're very uh, acutely aware that anything we do today has to have uh, has to have longevity in it in its design and its build out so it's not necessarily for for today or tomorrow but we can continue to add to it and continue to integrate with it in the future so i think in the round this partnership gives us not just a, a simple band-aid solution or a simple one-stop shop it actually gives us a, a, a continuing um a continuing partnership to to continue to drive that that technology as it comes to comes to the market and presumably as well, a partnership like this is important in helping Centrica meet ambitious decarbonisation targets of its own. Indeed, and in doing so, our own decarbonisation targets means that we have a, an inherent responsibility to those uh, targets of our customers too. So we're very complementary. We're on the same destination and we can work together to, uh, to reach it far sooner than I think we would have individually. So finally, guys, if I could just get you um, to summarise, if you like, um, I'd like you to let me know what excites you the most about the partnership between Lotus and Centrica and what you expect to see from this partnership over the next five years. What really excites me is uh, we don't even know the scale of what we could achieve from this partnership. Cars, homes and devices come together to play a part in the whole um, ownership experience imagine living with an app where you can do everything to do with your car your home and other things and then imagine adding value-added digital services and products on top where you can try and upgrade things within your car and within your home using your app i mean what an exciting uh, digital lifestyle that could be and carl what about you the cutting edge technologies that we we've both explored, both organisations have explored historically. I think there is this uh, this opportunity that we're going to do something really different. And you know, from a traditional car manufacturer going into a full electrification strategy with a very uh, ambitious growth plan, I think it's a very exciting time for for both organisations. And Centrica and myself, we're, we're thrilled to be part of it. It's just going to be a fantastic, uh, fantastic project. Well, Carl, Uday, thank you both very much for talking us through this really exciting new partnership. We've heard some 
really useful information and points to look out for in the future. The journey is going to be very exciting. The scale is going to be unknown and it's certainly very ambitious. So you can keep an eye out for more developments on our social channels and the launch of the incredible new Avaya over the coming months. Thank you and goodbye.